Global TV says certain kind of friend we no cape and some informal friend we love lake. We ain't global, but a fake friend and but a tape. We ain't global. We no promote them. We no support them. Look at them on a cheek come here represent for We ain't global TV. Check it. A few personal stories about what I like to call the danger of the single story. I thought about this when I left Nigeria to go to university in the United States. I was 19. My American roommate was shocked by me. She asked where I had learned to speak English so well and was confused when I said that Nigeria happened to have English as its official language. She asked if she could listen to what she called my tribal music and was consequently very disappointed when I produced my tape of Mariah Carey. So after I had spent some years in the US as an African, I began to understand my roommate's response to me. If I had not grown up in Nigeria, and if all I knew about Africa were from popular images, I too would think that Africa was a place of beautiful landscapes, beautiful animals, and incomprehensible people fighting senseless wars, dying of poverty and AIDS, unable to speak for themselves, and waiting to be saved by a kind white foreigner. So that is how to create a single story, show a people as one thing, as only one thing, over and over again, and that is what they become. I recently spoke at a university where a student told me that it was such a shame that Nigerian men were, were <coughs> physical abusers like the father character in my novel. I told him that I had just read a novel called American Psycho, <laughs> and, <laughs> and that it was such a shame that young Americans were serial murderers. <laughs> it would never have occurred to me to think that just because I had read a novel in which a character was a serial killer, that he was somehow representative of all Americans. And now this is not because I'm a better person than that student, but because of America's cultural and economic power, I had many stories of America. I had read Thailand, Updike, and Steinberg, and Gateskill. I did not have a single story of America. I've always felt that it is impossible to engage properly with a place or a person without engaging with all of the stories of that place and that person. The consequence of the single story is this, it robs people of dignity. It makes our recognition of our equal humanity difficult. It emphasizes how we are different rather than how we are similar. Stories matter. Many stories matter. Stories have been used to dispossess and to malign, but stories can also be used to empower and to humanize. Stories can break the dignity of a people, but stories can also repair that broken dignity. Good evening and welcome to the People's Point of View. Thank you very much for joining the Global TV group. Welcome, one and all. We are broadcasting on the X. Twitch on, on YouTube on our sister channel as well, which is the Global TV 358 Studios. Thank you all very much for joining. Like and share the lives, please. We're going to ask them about teeth in money tonight. And we're going to ask them if them have any more teeth in money put down for a particular purpose. Who remember Leap Vice Note? 
from KD Knight in 2020. Put out in the Gleaner. Who remember? Good evening to my community of parity and all my family members. Good evening to all my membership holders. Good evening to subscribers and viewers, commenters, sharers and likers. Good evening and welcome. Thank you all for joining us this evening. Annie Smith, good evening. Debbie White, good evening. Denise Hall, Natalia Freeman, good evening. Sunshine, good evening. Annie Smith, good evening, good evening. JP, good evening and welcome. Debbie Jervis, how are you? Gloria Morris, good evening and welcome. James, good evening. Marbury Light, good evening. Rose, good evening and welcome to the Charlie. Good evening and welcome. Gwendolyn Scott, AAB, good evening and welcome. Head teacher K, Wagwan, good evening. Patricia Matthews, good evening and welcome. Thank you all for joining us. Good evening to the bigot, the brute, and the batterer. Welcome. I know you're here. Run for cover. Hey. Now, I'm talking to nobody. I'm just saying, it, Bob Marley say, run for cover. Good evening and welcome. How much money are we paying Mark Barnett for the six months that he's been on interdiction? And why don't you rub in the papers with the Mark Barnett situation? Hmm? How much more are we going to have to pay Mark Barnett to sit at home? JC, good evening and welcome. I wonder how much more. But I want to ask the People's National Party something. May I tell them the truth? After me cook and eat, and, uh, and eat me go sleep and it did hard to wake up. That's why I never even come back for drive time, London. So I'm sort of unprepared, but I'm sure some of you would remember when Paula told us with regards to Mr. Barnes. That time has passed. I think time had passed for Paula and Nepa. If it was my correction, but I'm going to read through the article. But time, veteran, where I do up them time, yeah. Well, go on. Time did pass here, I think, Nepa and Paula. But time never passed for KSMC. What I want to ask the new control, KSMC, are you going to impose a penalty on Mr. Barnett? Or something in the article robbed me? Like, oh no, that it's a consideration or a speculative question from the journalist, but it still robbed me as to whether. There's a negotiation going on with Mr. Barnett. Then if Mr. Barnett is in breach and the municipal has the power to penalize him, rather be fine or otherwise. If we're not worried about the report, then that's enough. That's enough to get rid of him without a payoff, is it not? It's not like the investigation didn't find out that he breached. They knew he breached. The corruption with Nepa and Paula, them. them wait until time has passed. And since time has passed, we still sit down in a limbo, paying this guy big salary. He's a board member, president. And I think we're still paying Mr. Barnett 80% of his salary. When is this going to come to an end? 
And do we have to pay off Mr. Barnett millions to get rid of him? Or Mr. Barnett is going to stay on with the breaches and not be penalized. <coughs> Sorry. By whoever time has not passed for. So the People's National Party run KSMC will need to answer us if they're going to place any penalty on Mark Barnett. Because Feda, lots of you know, good evening and welcome. Feda never tell me if him are going to do anything. Feda is more interested in running around and blocking audits and calling for say, a distraction because PNP are going to run audit and on the on the know that audit can expose an awful. I wonder if Nigel Clark, I wonder if he come back yet. Because then can't find him to come to Parliament, can rectify conundrum. Violet Watts. The level of incompetency playing out in our parliament. I mean, one on a book right, I need to start sit down and write because this is this is a not this is a novel politics. Them something where happening in a civil politics is what you would read in some great novel. Hmm? There used to be a series in Britain. Correct me, teacher, head teacher, okay, Pamela McNeil. I think it was called Yes Prime Minister, is it not? Head teacher? There's a series in Britain called Yes Prime Minister, is it not? Well, it's the same Yes Prime Minister situation going on in Jamaica where nobody no question Andrew and his wife, nobody no stand up to them. Everybody just lead on a thin piece of tread following the Prime Minister. But before we get into the KD night, Galangi, make we read to the Mark Barnett article. Wanna be a patient with me then? Be a patient with the old eye. Come in a weird glass, I got tickle my nose. I mean, I know how to put a contact lens. Next thing me now, I can't get it off. So we will just have to. Post and go on and grunt and bear it. Denroy Daly. Uh, sorry, Deron Daly. Good evening and welcome. The fate of the National Water Commission President Mark Barnett still remains in limbo six months after he was placed on administra administrative leave following an explosive integrity commission investigation report which cited him and his wife, the attorney at law on it, Francis Barn, for various breaches relating to a house development being undertaken by them. Steady on. The report which was tabled in parliament in October last year concerned allegations of irregularities in the approval of the post-permit monitoring process in relation to the construction of a residential development by Barnett at 11 Claremont Drive, Kingston 6. Carly Jones, good evening and welcome. When asked for an update on the matter during Wednesday's post-cabinet briefing, at Jamaica House. Minister, Portfolio Minister Senator Man, Matthew Smoda told journalists that Barnett remains an administrative leave. He said that the IC report and the Director of Public Prosecution ruling on the matter would have given the ministry and indeed the board great cause for concern. We have taken so long to wrap up the issue. How long now, Paula and, and uh, I, uh, Paula uh, are ruling. And we still appear this guy big money for their home, and nobody can tell me when it's going to come to a conclusion. 
Samuda declined, however, to comment on whether Barnett would be returning to work or if there, if there are negotiation underway for his separation from the agency, stating that he, it is a matter for the National Water Commission Board. Now, my question to the National Water Commission Board, are you prepared to tell the public are you prepared to inform the public of the timeline as to when or what is the misunderstanding in your legal department why they cannot give you for months now a clear legal advice as to how Mark Bond disciplinary is to be treated at the board? Jesus Christ. Backwardness and cantangerousness, Monica Harder. They have followed the process outlined under the labor law and our internal procedures faithfully. Based on where the situation is at this stage, I will not comment further, but I can say that I share the concern of the public and I share the national assessment in the situation, he said. Game playing. When pressed for further details on the matter, Samuda said he expect the board to comment on the matter as soon as they are through their assessment and review their legal options. How long does it take your legal department? Because all of these government department and agencies set up by government have their own legal department. They have their own legal counsel. But never mind. If JLP employ you, if you work for JLP, automatically you're going to be done anyway. So that is to be understood. At this point, Robert Morgan, Dolorachi, Bugli, the minister in charge of lying, misinforming, blobbing and spluttering, chimed in to say that minister have zero influence, contact, or anything to do with disciplinary procedure relating to public officers. <laughs> Selective see in. Selective hear in. Selective speaking. I wonder if what Nesta Morgan said would apply to the crooked, thieving, corrupt wife of the Prime Minister who disciplined publicly. Don't. Back of the class. I want to see your book. And I want to know who marked them. I wonder if this would apply to the criminal that sits on the high chair in parliament. The criminal speaker. That which has dog power blood on her hands. I wonder, Nesta Morgan, if this would apply to politicians not getting involved in disciplinary pro... Them people are king we don't say no. And when they may go run out and uh, don't spawn, we know how to dunce down. Hmm? Run out fully dunce. Hmm? Back a wall dunce. Why not I couldn't come out and say the other day? With all due respect, Jesus Christ, them people, sometimes they want to drape them. Hmm? Angela 48349. Why Nesta Morgan couldn't come out and say? With all due respect, with regards to Miss Curtis, the Speaker of the House has overstepped her boundary or her jurisdiction. So why are you coming at public now a press conference come remind with said? Politicians, healthy eat with Carl, good evening. Politicians, 
can get involved in a disciplinary process of public official, then you all need to answer the question with regards to Juliet Holness disciplinary of Miss Curtis. You can't have it one way, Nesta. So if, if, so if Matthew Samuda can't get involved in a Mark Galangin, then Juliet needs to withdraw Altea Lacey. Fair involvement in a Miss Curtis disciplinary. It's just what would be called fair approach to the situation, Winston Daly. Good evening and welcome. But no, Juliet is protected behind the shadows of everything. I continue to read. If you know me by now, I know so I read and quarrel. He added, it is out of our remit as policymakers to interact with that process. So while it's okay for the media to ask the minister question, the entire process as it relates to whether or not somebody is being disciplined or not has nothing to do with either the cabinet or minister. I just want to want to I just want that to be very clear and understood, he said. Lionesta. Then apply this to Juliet Holness, Jamaican Carlos. Abina Sarkodi, good evening and welcome. Apply this then to Juliet Holness. If it is that ministers and members of cabinet cannot discipline public servants, how did we get to the point where Juliet Holness can publicly place a disciplinary letter on the file of a public servant, Nesta Morgan, make it make sense, count on what I'm dunce. That's why me have to celebrate my dunceness, you know. Me have to celebrate my dunceness. Wear it palm my sleeve like certain PMP. Write it over your so. Make you can see from far, say me a dunce. Me enjoy being dunce. Because if me did go bright, me would have struggled to understand what sort of bull crap are these people talking about. So my dunceness permit me to just find me and ask the boy I saw them time. No better hearing, no better barren. I don't know what, Mr. Maga. Let us read. Good evening and welcome. Apply this logic to Juliet. The logic that you have applied to Matthew Smoda and uh, Mark Barnett. Apply this, Nesta Morgan, to Juliet Holness and Valerie Curtis. And see if your argument makes sense. How it makes sense? And Nesta speaking it. It is Nesta speaking. Right, let me continue. In his, in his report on the matter, the IC Director of Investigation, Kevin Stevenson, had concluded that Mark Barnett and his wife had breached the Building Planning and Environmental Permit issued by Kingston and St. Andrew Municipal Corporation and the National Environmental Planning National Environment and Planning Agency, that's the NEPA one, I think one at the time has passed one, for the construction of the Clement Drive development consisting of 12 one-bedroom units. He said the fact that the development consists of six two-bedroom units and six three-bedroom unit. That's where the violation took place. The permit says, Bill 12 one-bedroom apartments. After he got the permit to do that, he built 12 units, but much bigger or taller than he was given permission to do. 
because him build six two be um, two bedroom unit and six three bedroom unit. Hold on. In her ruling, the DPP said that although the allegations support the laying of criminal charges against but the Barnets for breaching the environment permit, which is an offense under the National Resource Conver Conservation Authority Act, there can be no prosecution of criminal action in non-state um, statute bar, given that the initiation of prosecution is time sensitive and was not initiated 12 months within the breach, within the, ident the breach being identified. So what that confused part they mean, it means that once NEPA or whoever identified that breach, they should have charged Mark Barnett within 12 months of identifying those breach. So that was where the time has passed argument come from because them allow the thing to run a year, more than a year before they make a ruling upon it. So therefore, by the time the ruling came, it is statue barred. You can't carry a court because you make your time pass. And these are the people who will continue to pay. We're paying these, this man, I think it's 80% of him board member salary. You, the taxpayer, are paying that money. And you don't know how long you're going to have to pay him for. So now that the control of the municipal has been changed, Paula said KSMC is still, time has not passed for KSMC to impose penalty on Mr. Barnett or on the Barnett. Will the new control KSMC impose penalty in its millions on the bonnets if you know if you're not gonna prosecute them will the municipal impose impose um punitive fines on them punitive fines mean it's it's High enough in our way to punish you. It's a it, it's a payment of, of, of uh, it's a punishment. Mm. Separate to damages, punitive. It's more to do with disciplining you financially, really. Mm. But let's listen to a leak voice note. From KD Knight. And then when we after listen to that leaked voice note, we'll come back and ask. This leak voice note, some of you might have heard it before because it's in a circulation from 2020. Sharon Powell, good evening and welcome. And this was put out in 2020 by the Gleaner. So let's listen to KD Knight and then we'll come back. Carl Nigel and Dunn. And all of the other one them, but we want to ask Nigel. Nigel done favor Andrew Tufton. We want to ask them some money questions. So call them. Not on them door when I pass. And people don't seem to understand this part of it. Money is not easy to come by. You ask people for donations and so on. They give you some. I don't want to tell you who was Oswest's um, largest donor. 
I don't want to tell you. Who gave him the most money? But I'll tell you this. Much of the money that the labor had spent in this election was money that they stole from the people themselves. They stole that money and they stored a part of it to use in buying votes. It is not through the generosity of others that they were able to get the whole set of money that they had. This was as a result of them stealing $14 billion from the public purse. $14 billion, that's $4.6 million from every single Jamaican, including the baby, including the beggar who has to pay GCT. And then they took it and they bought to use in buying votes. It is not through the generosity of others that they were able to get the whole set of money that they had. This was as a result of them stealing $14 billion from the public purse. $14 billion, that's $4.6 million from every single Jamaican, including the baby, including the beggar who has to pay GCT. And then they took it and they bought my black brothers and sisters. This is a return to slavery. That's what it is. But this time is not the white man buying the black man. It's the black man putting up himself for sale to anybody, whether black or white. My brother, we are going to regret this. I will be gone. I will be gone. But black people going to regret it. Because the time is coming when not one single person coming out of North East St. Catherine will be able to become a member of Parliament. Not one. Only the rich, the very rich, will be able to become members of parliament to plunder the public purse some more and steal some more and let themselves get richer. I'm told that Michael Mann, the time gone. My God, my God, why has thou forsake? I still the Williams, good evening and welcome, Gloria Morris. Beat and teach, Wagwan, Mitchie, good evening, Sharon Peart, good evening and welcome. I want to ask, give now that we, Kate M, good evening and welcome. Now that we are aware, Winston Daly, good evening. As to why they were hiding or denying the existence of the report Mark Golden spoke about, we now knew so that because them just take with money, fling so John P. good evening, fling yourself, so, fling their so, and all over the place between them and them friend in a so very, very corrupt and questionable business dealing. Now, I want to ask this question. Any of those money swindled from the Ministry of Finance through tax administration, in particular, 
Was that money stealing between Nigel Clark and Dunn and others in order to channel those money to put it aside to buy votes for the 2025 general election? Because that's the big prize, you know, Colin Humphreys. That is the big prize. And more and more we are seeing why Una fight tooth and nail to hold on to KSMC. Una don't want to, but we want to know what's going on there. We want to know what the fight is about. We want the audits to run. In fact, audit should have run all over the place right up until next year. Remember, there's many pushback from the Prime Minister's office with regards to audit. The Prime Minister himself, for about three, four years running now, cannot verify his statutory declaration. Hmm? I'm sure Jamaica people already start, sorry, particularly since the 2020 general election. That's when Andrew Holness started to show his real colors. Because with KD Knight's argument then, because this argument was back in 2020, it would have made sense, Andrew with even a very low voter turnout, took the country by landslide. They took strongholds, what you would call them, for the People's National Party, thereby putting the country in the position that it is right now. Unchecked legislative power. A narcissist, giving so much power to a narcissist, it's only going to create control, chaos, and disorder. Especially when they're ruling by greed, especially when they're just ruling for themselves, it is where we're at. The unmatched legislative power of this government. They can push anything through parliament. None of his cronies of the 40 other thieves, none have rebelled against the prime minister. None has voted down or pushed back on any of the prime minister legislative agenda that contravene the constitution or violate your rights. And this is why I'm so annoyed that interest groups in Jamaica and the People's National Party is not using the courts always observing. Is not using the courts enough to challenge this government. Because when states become tyrannical like this your saving grace is either the court or the military we cannot depend on the military in jamaica because they don't understand Mongo african military understand how you move corrupt leaders you move leaders that are a risk to the life of the nation, which the wholeness regime has become. So we cannot depend on the military if this government go haywire on us. And this is why we should use the court to back this government up, sue this government for everything, block up the government in a court. Mm -hmm. 
Let the court tell us. So them are going to hate you and they can't even train themselves. So what are they for? What are on a, on a top brass in the Jamaica military. This is what I said. Jamaica don't need an army. Jamaica need to turn them lazy people there. But they have set an army into police. We don't need an army in Jamaica. It's a waste of time. That's why America go use on a kill off one another now. Nothing can run good in our country. It's run by selfish, inexperienced, power hungry. I don't think people understand how much will parliament break down since the budget debate. It's a total collapse. Not now going in the make sense anymore. We're going to charge them for those missing money who are going to investigate. No. The reason why nothing now going to happen, big teeth protect little teeth and little teeth protect big teeth. The reason why none of these governments don't react against each other. JLP, the big teeth, they've now prosecute PMP, the little teeth, because the whole of them have scratched each other back. PNP, the little thief, now prosecute JLP, the big thief, when them in a power, because the whole of them have scratched each other back. And my problem is, it's just the game the whole of them play with we, no matter what you see them say to each other in a parliament or on the political campaign. It's just a game because when PMP did it, they protect Labour. When Labour did it, they protect PMP. One of the things with Andrew Holness I use against Mark Golden now, him and him counsel and MP them, is the disgruntled Lisa Camp PNP them. They might give them people their gravy train. And that is causing a huge lot of disturbance in the Mount Golden camp. Because you know what Jamaican, why Jamaican licky licky with, with tongue boot mentality I go take with our help. Are them people they are make with nyam food? That is a conversation. Are the JLP counselor they make with nyam food? And this is the vote buying, the vote coercion that was to take place in our system and going to the point now where if you want to win an election in Jamaica, you cannot win it on policy. You have to buy it. It's just what the political um, atmosphere has gone to in Jamaica. Very few people are voting on conscience and policy. The majority of young Jamaicans, especially now, want money for them vote. We heard a lot of it throughout the um, local government election just gone. Amazing Grace, how are you doing? Marie Messenger TV, good evening and welcome. Mm -hmm. So therefore, every ways that you can think of that for us to try and change our system <coughs> it's like there's a roadblock there because there's no clean institution in our country where we can say we can use to work with this for clean up everywhere dirt everywhere you look dirty marcia estate good evening and welcome Noreen Robbins, Robinson, good evening and welcome. We don't see how the church them silent. We don't see how the community groups them silent. Vivian Hamilton, Vivian Hamilton rather, good evening and welcome. The civil society groups, everybody silent. 
church silence opposition silence then why you think this government wouldn't run with the narrative that they are doing well which government is doing as bad as the anti wholeness regime that does that, that does not have pushback such as protests strikes and demonstrations so of course they can run with the narrative that they are doing well because people sit down relaxed without a lot of us voicing on social media the rest are we just sit down like we're comfortable with it then therefore government don't see a problem a government don't see when we act like on a fed up or on a don't want this all right god good even and welcome Well, KD Knight, KD Knight said it. I'm going to play back the KD Knight. It's not long. It's just three minutes. I'm going to play back the KD Knight explanation to that 2020 election, I believe. Uh, how Andre would have got to this landslide election that gives him the that gave him that gave him the power to rip up our democracy rip up what our constitution mean and stand for ram raid over with legislative process ram raid over offices of accountability no other government never behaved like andrew of course andrew holness is not the only prime minister in jamaica to have run more than one office but compare for andrew holy And agencies, agencies and organizations which ought to be independent of the government, such as the Electoral Commission of Jamaica and the Office of the Political Ombudsman, all in the Prime Minister's office. But let's listen to KD Knight one more time for those of you who have just joined. This is the problem, and people don't seem to understand this part of it. Money is not easy to come by. You ask people for donations and so on, they give you some. I don't want to tell you who was Oswest's um, largest donor. I don't want to tell them who gave him the most money. But I'll tell you this. Much of the money that the labor had spent in this election was money that they stole from the people themselves. They stole that money and they stored a part of it to use in buying votes. It is not through the generosity of others that they were able to get the whole set of money that they had. This was as a result of them stealing $14 billion from the public purse. $14 billion, that's four point six million dollars from every single jamaican including the baby including the beggar who was to pay gct and then they took it and they bought my black brothers and sisters this is a return to slavery that's what it is but this time is not the white man buying the black man. It's the black man putting up himself for sale to anybody, whether black or white. My brother, 
We are going to regret this. I will be gone. I will be gone. But black people going to regret it. Because the time is coming when not one single person coming out of North East St. Catherine will be able to become a member of Parliament. Not one. Only the rich, the very rich, will be able to become members of parliament, to plunder the public purse some more and steal some more and let themselves get richer. I'm told that Michael Mann, the time gone. My God. My God. Why hast thou forsaken? Christopher, good evening, Perspective Power, good evening and welcome. Thank you for joining us. Tamara, good evening and welcome. I do believe in reparations. I really speak about it though. Why we don't speak about rep um, reparation? Mina Carl. For no more of poor people's blood money to fatten criminal politician pockets. Under the system of governance and pol black politics where we have around the world, I couldn't care less if white people give us reparation unless it's going to be an infrastructure development done by them. Because we say, we now come on my platform, come sit down and call for money, for build up politician packet, for politician enrich themselves more out of black people's blood money. No, we now work for them that way. Then. I do believe in reparations, but we now fight for build up no rich people. I'm sorry. I don't deal with that issue. Not in the political atmosphere that, we're, that, we, that, that, that we exist in, whether we are in Africa or the Caribbean. It has to be changed. There has to be a change before I come onto this reparation bandwagon. Because we only are going to work to fatten them teeth there. Where everything comes. We're not poor enough. You heard KD Knight just now, we no poor. The money where them are thief can take every single Jamaican out of poverty, we no poor. The money where them are thief can improve every Jamaican social and living standard, we no poor. No, we're not. Pauline Johnson. We're not poor. We are kept poor. We are being held down and controlled. But we're not a poor people. We live in a very rich country. We live in a country where if our budget haven't been raided for the last 70 years by the Jamaica Labour Party and the People's National Party and their so, uh, 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 and they're selected technocrats and bureaucrats. This is why the wife of the prime minister can build 800 million complex development out of the thief in money them after she thief people and you know she still thief money for uno they got develop multi-million Patricia Williams multi-million dollar development we're not poor are the ruling class them have we in a disposition are the ruling class them a steal off we wealth we're not poor don't make them fool or no anyway you see black people on the face of this earth they're rich people with natural and human resources and cosmic intelligence. 
We can just create out of thin air. We're not poor. We're not backwards. We don't lack governance and leadership. Everything that you see is happening to us is done by design. This is why I say you must think always as if you are in a war. We are still at war. The war declared on us by the West has never ended. The only difference in the war is that the face of those who carried out the onslaught against us has changed. We are still at war, my people. And until we recognize that we are at war, we are never going to understand our role that we're supposed to play in standing up, fighting back, and make sure we put an end to oppression when we're poor. We are not poor. See the problem yeah, what we have in Jamaica. We're not poor. Here is the problem. Speaker, thank you. I am seeking clarity on a couple of matters. First, you indicated that the officers would review reports from the Integrity Commission. Could you indicate who those officers are and what the purpose of the review would be before the reports are tabled? That's first. Secondly, you said annual reports would be sent to the Oversight Committee and special investigative reports before they are tabled. I'd like to understand the rationale for that vis-a-vis um, -vis other reports from the Integrity Commission, which would be sent directly to the Speaker and be tabled. I, my understanding of the role of the Oversight Committee is that the Oversight Committee would have it would be outside the scope of the Oversight Committee to opine on an annual report or even a special investigative report. So I'm trying to understand what the rationale is for sending it there first before it is stable here. Those are my questions. Preliminary. Uh, Madam Speaker, further to the questions asked by the member from South East St. Andrew, my understanding is that committees of parliament act on behalf of the full house. So matters that are referred to the House, matters that comes to the House and is referred to the committee, that committee acts on behalf of the House. If the House does not know what the committee is acting on on its behalf, it seems a little bit, you know, not clear. In other words, a committee of this House, the Oversight Committee, the Integrity Oversight Committee, for example, gets a report that is sent to the House not sent to the committee, sent to the House. The House does not know, meaning us, the members, do not know the contents of that report for which the committee will be acting on. So if you could give me some clarification on that. Madam Speaker, just one clarification. Because I understand you to be saying that the report will go to the committee, the oversight committee. But the operations of this oversight committee is public. The media is here, so they will be, the media will be exposed to those reports even before the members here. So I just want to see if we could clarify that aspect. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, in addition to the questions that are being asked, Madam Speaker, I, I needed a little clarity myself, to just to be clear. So let's say, for example, the a special report is tabled on the matter that the country is waiting to hear, the illicit six. Um, that would come to the House and go order, straight or, to no, the... On a point of order, I do not know of what you are speaking, member. It's a... Mm -hmm. I don't know, no. Please, please, please remove that comment. Please remove that comment. That comment is inappropriate, doesn't belong in the House, and is not included in any document submitted in this Honourable House. Please remove have, your comment. I've, I've heard what you have said, Madam Speaker. And Hansard, please that. strike the comment. So let's say, let's say a, special, a special report comes to the House, Madam Speaker. It, it comes to the Speaker, as you have said, it would go directly to the 
Integrity Oversight um, Committee. The question that I'm asking is uh, when we had the issue about, when we had the issue with the speaker, former speaker of the house, the issue about uh, conflict of interest arose. And there was a concern about individuals being on a committee who are subject of the report of the committee. I'm trying to figure out how one would be able to identify whether or not there would be any conflict of interest on, of, of the members who are part of the oversight committee and how that would be dealt with. I'm also wondering... No, I, I don't think I will be able, if I have so many questions at the same time, remember them all to respond. I'm hoping so you I'm going to ask you to hold. I'm going to... That is where I want to play that one. So that show you the dunceness and inexperience of Juliet Holness. You are meant to be taking notes when you're up there and you get questions put to you. You're meant to be jotting down those questions so you remember them. That's one of the problem facing us at the moment inexperience lack of competency michelle lewis wilson but what is the solution current demand paula shelley good evening to the current political spheres in jamaica i do believe it get to the point where is only a third party can save Jamaica. Get Laxa Gregory. The, the, the lack of option, given the two sorted option we have, the lack of option is a disenfranchisement in our country at the moment. Plain truth, good evening and welcome. The political apathy, 60 to 70% of Jamaica stick two fingers up to the electoral process, to the political process in our country. Thereby, that leaves a gaping vacuum for a third party to tap into. Rosemary Samuels, good evening and welcome. What are the problems that we're going to come up on here? Tribalism. Though we are so disenfranchised, majority disenfranchised, this politically dispossessed Jamaicans are still hell-bent in the tribalism of the Jamaica Labour Party and the People's National Party. We are going to come up against also the lack of knowledge where people think that if you're not paying me for my vote. I'm not participating in the process. Now, this is where we the people are to be blamed. This is where we the people are the cause. If 70% of the population votes in an election, it sends a different signal to government as opposed to when only 30 to 40% of the electorate, those who are eligible to vote, goes to the poll. That tells the government that majority of you are disengaged. And of that 40% that voted, I don't have to worry about 20 odd percent because 20 odd percent 
of that 40% voted for me. So the very little dispossessed People's National Party lot out there won't be a voice. It, it will be a voice in the wilderness, something that we really don't have to listen to. Besides, we have the legislative majority. We can stick two fingers up to them. Tash, good evening and welcome. Thank you for your membership, Tash. Mm -hmm. So these are the problems that we expect to come up against. The nepotism, the cronyism, the tribalism, and the political transaction. How do we get back to a place of policy, politics, where the people wants to engage in the system because of what prospective politician will do, can do, and promise to do for their community? Don't get it twisted. These one promise it as well. But over the last 50 years, have they delivered road, water, street lighting have they developed our schools or hospitals look at our local townships and i still maintain government on to use the stiffing money around the country and use the budget on a stiff the budget and use for on a in money around the country because the money will fill with government, them steal. You can run two country with it. You can run two country with it. The 14 billion the Jamaica Labour Party stole to buy the 2020 general election could have taken Jamaicans out of poverty could have raised the living standard of Jamaicans living in squalors and behind zinc fence. That could have created jobs for so much young people. You could have used those money to give so much young people business opportunity. The government will not act, will not react until you, the people, act. Until you, the people, demand services from the government. Everybody will be queuing up to make sure, say, even when they come with them neck long like Finesta Morgan, they guarantee you, say, they are go left with their neck short. Even if you come with your neck as a yardstick, you're going to lose it. Because by the time on a thief and stuff, hmm? by the time them thief and stuff, the whole of them left there like pat got pig. Even when them come there with all of the bone, them stand up all over and around them. The whole of them left like Pat got pig because all they do is come and thief. When you don't remember how Alanda Terry Lang face did stubbant. When you don't remember how Alanda Terry Lang face did stubbant when him just come to. I truly believe our political system needs some fixing. Too much you hear about corrupt politicians and nothing happen. Too much you hear about politicians who take away poor people money and none of them reach in jail. And to the young people at home or wherever you are, and to all Jamaicans, I have one question for you. Take a look at your communities. Take a look at the sliding dollar. Take a look at the failing healthcare and ask yourselves, where is the progress? Where is the progress that this arrogant and disrespectful government keeps talking about? With this existing callous government, matters have gone from bad to worse. 
Yes, with this existing callous government, matters has gone from bad to worse. With this Jamaica Labour Party, Jamaica Looting Party regime, matters has gone all in foster from bad to worse in a circle. Good evening and welcome, Tala Charlie. Hmm? Matters has gone from bad to worse. Look, when Nesta, Ma uh, uh, when Nesta Morgan and um, Terry Lang them come, the whole of them come with the hard stick neck. The whole of them come with them face where you're down go market, go buy that bony piece of meat that's to make soup. Look if you can't see neck bone and cheek bone now. Them pull out. Hmm? Them pack them bag. And when them sit a bag full and can't hold no more, Georgia Dennis, them start pack them gut. That's why you see the whole of them look like pack gut pig. Because they're my teeth. Hmm? The money of the people just continue to circle in a very small circle. Mm? And then them come tell you, say, one pose now enough to come from the diaspora in a summer. They come invest with them and make sure we don't do more business dealing with them thief and friend them. Where all them want to do, them know say. So all heap of money in the diaspora and their job is to make sure real sweet how are you their job is to make sure them live in our pocket it's all about the money where cash cow in the diaspora karen Nemard, good evening and welcome we in the diaspora are cash cows that's why you see them are aim deep after we pack it. Them now, the only relationship them want with we is money relationship, investments, donation. Hmm? That's all them want. Otherwise, we wouldn't get better treatment at home and better treatment at the agencies. Hmm? We don't care about we when we come to Jamaica, when we Jamaicans come to Jamaica, and we get harassed at Jamaica airport like we're foreigner, and embarrassingly, white people just swan them mother heaven away past we, like in a foreign airport, them the drunk for who not talk to. Hmm? When we have one of the buyouts like China, China Chin and them people, them Peter and Peter, what them name? And all of you can buy out. And all of you fright with a big position. If we did fright with a big position, we'd in a city of London working. Me not love big position, I mean, I love crowd around me. Hmm? The problem with Phoebe, technocrats and bureaucrats, them. The whole of them have a price span them head. The whole of them have a price span them head. So them government friend them can get them to play for them game. Them not playing a game for you, the people. No? They don't play game for you, the people. They play game for their pocket or their lord and master. This is why nothing is ever gonna be done around us until we become active in the process. Cause them not dead for we. Don't ever think that them dead for we. They will never be there for us. Until we decide a way to design our solution we are going to continue into this cycle because we have given our power to them. Our silence is giving up our power to them. And going back to a third political party, 
is a saving grace for Jamaica. We need to educate people out of the tribal politics. We need to educate people out of the commercial politics and get people to understand that it's only a policy focus, policy-centered politics that is going to alleviate a lot of the problem around us. The issue of crime in Jamaica is because of lack of policy, lack of implementation of policies and enforceability of policies. We have problems. But if we don't come together and fix them, they're only going to get worse, Jamaicans. We should know this by now. If we don't do nothing to a problem, it's only going to either, one, stay there the same, or it's just rather get worse. It is super madness. Super madness that we are expecting criminals and thieves and corrupt murderers to do good for us. It is super madness. Take a minute, Lono. Hmm? We are going crazy when we're asking criminals to fight crime. We're asking thieves to carry a weapon. Oh, you're you. asking thieves to carry your purse. Hmm? And we are the mad people, no? And them glad say we're mad. We mad and them glad say we're mad. Because you know, mad people don't know what's going on around them. We just walk around in days. We just turn up and a tear out of space. So that is what is happening in our country. But we need to get back to policy-centered politics. And we need to create a third party that can give another option to the people. We need to educate the people out of tribalism, Durant Clark. Good evening and welcome. Education matters. Information matters. But then again, Jamaican, uno don't want it. Uno don't want the information. Because when you look at how black people and Jamaicans in particular interact with information in the social spheres, the nastier you get on social media is the more attention you garner. Esther Dwyer, good evening and welcome. Jamaicans love sus, baga baga, and nonsense and social media. If we were using the powerful platforms we have on social media in the lens of social justice, government would run crazy. Government would on our own crazy. But a lot of us in the social space has taken over from JBC and RGR. And you're doing worse to the mind of the people. What's our... You are doing what's our to the mind of the people because you have taken the people mind in a state of docileness. Yes, those are you who are on social media who are just going after the number and the catch. You will do anything that can draw Jamaican mindset down into the abyss. Stay in the mud. Walla. And when you just wash off the mud, go back, go walla. It is the mindset that we are trying to change. Of course, sometimes me listen, me listen to the baga baga rants so because when I want to clear my head of the hope of research, I have to go sit down whole day and listen to Bev or listen to Mackerel, of course, but me don't make it the entire thing about me. Me multitask. Machine, not talk to me! Right. Not talk about me! Never 
Don't bring me come here. Get the fucking hell. So they reach ya. You don't know? You don't black that How me reach ya? Why do you <laughs> Of course, yes. Sometimes some of these things are funny and entertaining. But it shouldn't be the be all and end all of what we do on social media. There is a lot that is happening in our country. That big platform holder, big platform holders all across Jamaica allow the government to get away. Where a lot of us are behaving no better than um, RGR, CVM, and JBC, who only who is just there to make sure you hold the people mind in docileness and contempt because it pays you financially and it gives you a status. No, we will come out here and fight the battle regardless. And you know what hurt me most of the time? Most of these people who you stay with, good talent and influence on social media. These people have children to fight to protect their future. Me not have no picnic. Me don't have a faster son. But these people don't see the need to come out there and stand up and talk up for them children to protect them children future to build a better Jamaica for them children. No, one of big social media influencers is about richness and famousness. That's why we don't have to go so low and dirty because low and dirty sells on social media. Just look over Pretty Dad. Just look over Mackerel and all of those people. Imagine all of we use with influence to fight against corruption in a Jamaica. Whether we are fight JLP or PNP. Imagine, just imagine all of us using social media to influence the Jamaica. So don't even talk about Beggy Beggy Peggy. Hmm? See how beggy, beggy, peggy stop the social justice work and the social begging. Run for cover. Hmm? I hear Chenton and run for cover all over there. Well, you know my business. Oh, yeah, me know your business. Good evening and welcome to the bigot, the brute, and the batterer. Hmm? Want to stop the begging. Stop look, the normalization. Norman Ferguson, how are you? And let us come on board and work for Jamaica. We don't have picking it to build Jamaica left back. When me gone, me gone. We don't have one whole thing, a generation left yeah, behind you know, to make sure say, you know, where they on social media waste time and a skin out on you know, crockers and rockers just for little money and attention. Come on, let's fight this war for our children. Hmm? Come on and let's fight this war for our children. No politician on the war to make it better for us. No, sit down and wait and have a long, long time coming. If we no sit down and think, say, politician will take Jamaica and mess it up, is going to do anything to make it better. We no don't see how the current situation in Jamaica is beneficial to thief and wicked, corrupt, lying, murderous politician. Don't you see how lucrative? Hmm? Don't you see how lucrative it is for them? We not get no money out of it. KKD night telling us say, the money where Andrew them steal and buy the 2020 general election. Country girl, good evening and welcome. How are you? The money where Andrew them thief and buy the 2020 general election couldn't take Jamaicans out of poverty. Couldn't give each Jamaican four million plus. Hmm? Couldn't take Jamaicans out of squalorly living.
could have put all the Jam young Jamaican Spanish small business ladder. We not make no money out of Jamaica, you know. I be a thief and wicked and liar and friend and company and make money out of Jamaica. We not get nothing out of it. Money that Jamaica dash with. Money that Jamaica spin round. If we can pay dopey rent, if we can pay quarter, three quarter million a month to dopey. Hmm? If we can pay three quarter millions a month for just one building to hold, one total dopey, you know. It's not like a hope a dopey we are paid for. A one dopey living a done building. Hmm? And if we are paid quarter, three quarter, almost three quarter million per month, with just one total dopey. Hmm? Imagine. And the question is to be asked. This route of stealing when Nigel and Dunn and the others, them are going pan. How much of it stashed away to buy the 2025 general election? <coughs> hmm? Three quarter million per month, Dion Johnson. For an empty building with just one doppel living there, you know? And we, the taxpayers, we don't have money that Jamaica dash with. Jamaica is a money laundering haven. You know how much jugs money Juliet wash, wash him, jug dealer, brother and uncle? Do you know how much jugs money for Juliet? Jug dealer people, them are furry that them use to buy election, election time. Yes, Andrew Holness, me know. Yes, Andrew Holness, you're well affiliated with criminal and drug dealers such as Pilly Blacks. Yes, Andrew Holness, you turn up out of Pilly Blacks a whole heap of time with bad man with them gun in them hand. In front of the prime minister, illegal gun. Are these people who no ask for clean up on a country? Stay there, don't get up and start to take control. Like other people around the world are showing government that this is not about you, it's about all of us. This is not for you, it's for all of us hmm? listen people we've got to wake up the sleeping is getting beyond the pale now government is taking note of your sleeping and by that government is taking more of your powers Oh, yes. He, that guy, um, Dion, he fund their election campaign big time. Some of the money, some of the money in the complex development where Juliet Holness are doing is also washing our big brother money. A big criminal, a big criminality. Aguan, but as I said to you, the people, it is for us to change this thing. It is never going to change until we, the people, change it. Hmm? You see, even the 2020 general election as well, Juliet Holness drug dealing. And brother, was it 13 million? Him donate to Andrew. Maybe I see him name KD Knight now one call. He's one of Andrew's biggest donor. Remember when KD make a plate back? Remember when KD Knight said, I don't want to tell you who he is his biggest donor? I feel that's the person KD Knight attacked, but then don't want to call name in a public. But to me, not afraid to call their name. It's just a bullet that will take me out. It doesn't really matter. <laughs>
And people don't seem to understand this part of it. Money is not easy to come by. You ask people for donations and so on. They give you some. I don't want to tell you who was Oswest's um, largest donor. I don't want to tell you who gave him the most money. But I'll tell you this. Much of the money that the labor had spent in this election was money that they stole from the people themselves. They stole that money and they stored a part of it to use in buying votes. It is not through the generosity of others that they were able to get the whole set of money that they had. This was as a result of them stealing $14 billion from the public purse. $14 billion, that's $4.6 million from every single Jamaican, including the baby, including the beggar who has to pay GCT. And then they took it and they bought my black brothers and sisters. This is a return to slavery. That's what it is. But this time is not the white man buying the black man. It's the black man putting up himself for sale to anybody, whether black or white. My brother, we are going to regret this. I will be gone. I will be gone. But black people are going to regret it. Because the time is coming when not one single person coming out of North East St. Catherine will be able to become a member of parliament. Not one. Only the rich, the very rich, will be able to become members of parliament, to plunder the public purse some more and steal some more and let themselves get richer. I'm told that Michael Mann, the time gone. My God. My God. Why hast thou forsaken? There is still time for change. There is still hope for Jamaica. We, the people, can save our country. We, the people, can save our democracy. We, the people, can build a better and a brighter future for the next generation. But we can't sit down and we backside do it. It's just as simple as that, Torrance Hamilton. We can't sit down and we backside with. We're going to have to, all of us, become brave leaders and become active. Rochelle Williams, how are you doing? The longer we sit down waiting for God to help or waiting for, for a Samaritan to come from somewhere, are waiting for murderers, thieves, and wicked, corrupt politicians to all of a sudden turn around and have a good heart and start caring about you. Oh. Mm? So it is our duty, all of us, one and all, to make sure we take a stand against barbarity and tyranny. Because lest we do, then, as KD Knight says, we are going to regret it. We are regretting the result of the 2020 general election already. Are you going to go further into this mess 2025 or will there be a drastic pullback from the cliff edge politics?
that the Jamaica Labour Party has taken us into. I want to thank you all for being here with us on the People's Point of View tonight on this or Global TV group. Thank you all for joining us. Your appreciation is much supported. I would like to encourage you before you go to like and share the live, please. And with regards to Nesta and his lies about separation of power, let me play it quickly before I go, but I did the explanation to that in my earlier video this morning. So let's take a look, and if you want to get the understanding to the lies and the misinformation Nesta Morgan told at the press conference and in Parliament, then this morning's show, I gave an explanation to that. Works. The opinions. You all have a cursory understanding very well as well. The opinions of who has some cursory understanding of how government works. The opinions. You all have a cursory understanding very shortly as well. The opinions of the Attorney General was requested by the Speaker of the House, not by the opposition. The legal advisor, the legal advisor to the Parliament is the Parliamentary Council. You have absolutely no obligation, Madam Speaker, to share an opinion from the Attorney General to the government, to the opposition. You may do it because of your good nature, but you have no such obligation. You started your question by saying in light of growing public outrage. I do not see any growing public outrage. I see members of the opposition and others seeking to stoke public outrage, right, which has not been stoked. The fact of the matter is the speaker, previous speaker, acted in a particular way. The current speaker acted in a particular way. The current speaker has articulated very clearly the reasoning behind her acting in that particular way. Um, and she... The other thing I want to say to you, the executive is separate from parliament. The minister of information sits in the executive. The parliament is a separate part of the governance structure. So it is very challenging for me, though I may offer an observation on a matter related to the administration and management of parliament, as we are constantly accused by others of overstepping our limit and commenting on matters and merging the executive and the cabinet. So on one hand, you cannot say that there's a separation of powers, but then on the other hand, you're asking me to opine on an era that is a separate branch of government. It's actually unfair. Who really get this Batman joke with him smirking? Winston Daly, Christine Gilbert. Good evening. But everything you heard Mr. Morgan said just now was lies, deflection, and misinformation. I gave the explanation to that this morning in my earlier show. So anyone is confused by all those plotters and bloodles from Nesta Morgan. Go back to my show this morning to which I break down, gave the breakdown and explanation to his lies, defection, misinformation, and confusion. But thank you all for being here this evening. Join us back tomorrow when Global TV will continue the discussion of the business of our country. Thank you very much and good evening from Global Television Group.